I think it's worked out in his favour. There are no guarantees in this life. <laughs> Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well and that you had a great week. To all of my house guests, come in, make yourselves at home, make yourselves comfortable. If you're passing by and you'd like to become a house guest, don't forget to hit subscribe and activate all of your notifications. I'm Chez, this is Chez Moi, welcome to my place. guys it's been another unsurprising week let me say in the murky world of the mainstream media so let's get into this video delusion according to wikipedia the delusion is a false fixed belief that is not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence WebMD.com gives an example of a delusion. A person with a delusion believes something that isn't true, no matter how much evidence you give to the contrary. Last week, when Harry gave an exclusive interview to ABC, the British media's interpretation of it came as no surprise to me. This article is from the dailymail.co.uk on the 16th of February 2024. It's headed Prince Harry interview. All the revelations from the Duke of Sussex's conversation with Good Morning America. I'm just going to read a couple of um, extracts from this article. I don't want to go through the whole thing. So this particular section is headed, Royal Family Reunion is on the cards. Hmm, okay. The Duke of Sussex also revealed he was grateful to have seen his father Charles III in person and hopes the diagnosis can have a reunifying effect on the royal family. Reeve, the son of late Superman actor Christopher Reeve, who was paralysed in 1995, said... I've also found in my own life that sort of an illness in the family can have a galvanising or a sort of reunifying effect for a family. Is that possible in this case? Harry replied, absolutely, yeah I'm sure. Throughout all these families I see it on a day-to-day -day basis, again the strength of the family unit coming together. I think any illness, any sickness brings families together, I see it time and time again. And that makes me very happy. And then this section is headed, Harry is coming back to the UK soon. Um, I, I know what they're trying to do here. Anyway, asked how he had processed the fact that there's so much happening back with your family and where you come from. Harry said, I have my own family, as we all do, right? My family and my life in California is as it is. 
I have got other trips planned that would take me through the UK or back to the UK. I will stop in and see my family as much as I can. Okay, so yeah, he clearly says, you know, when he he stops off in the UK or he's got, you know, stuff to do in the UK, he's going to see his family. (laughs) I take that to mean he will see his dad because really he... I get the impression he, he's not interested in seeing anyone else. And the fact that they've... Um, let me go back to this other paragraph. Royal Family Reunion is on the cards. Why is it on the cards? You know, both these um, subtitles trying to give the impression that Harry is ready to rush back to the confines of the firm. I don't think so. You know, they have to transcribe exactly what he said, but they want to put a twist on it to give the impression that he, you know, wants to pack his bags and come back. He he doesn't. You know, if you want him back, why don't you want his wife back? Harry's not dumb. The whole point of him leaving was because you mistreated his wife that's one of the major reasons why they left you know you've got police racially abusing his wife you've got greasy podcasters now in prison because of what they said about her son about their son Archie I mean what's there to come back for no Harry is not coming back okay (laughs) I don't understand why there's this... It is a delusion because the man clearly told you time and time again he's not coming back. And this is what they've taken, the British tabloid media have taken from this interview. And I guess a lot of them are not happy because it was an exclusive given to um, an American network. And that's why... In last week's video, when I played the initial um, video, the audio part, and the ITV correspondent said, you know, he's courting the American media or he's he's coming into the limelight. I mean, what kind, uh, what kind of nonsense is that? Uh, I don't, I don't get it. Oh well, I do get it, but. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, doesn't surprise me. The British media want you to believe he is so miserable and he's missing his old life back in the United Kingdom. Here is what Harry has stated over the last few years. Can you see a day when you would return as a full-time member of the royal family? No. I can't see that happening. No. I can't see that happening. How are you enjoying your time living in the US? It's amazing. I love every single day. The kids are growing up like all kids do very, very fast. Um, they've both got an incredible sense of humor and you know, make us laugh and keep us grounded. Are you happy? Are yes. you? I'm very, very happy. I'm very at peace. I am in a better place than I've ever been. And I think that probably angers some people. The safety of my family is my priority. And that is the main reason that we left. Some people always thought that Meghan would leave. But I don't think they ever thought that I would leave as well. I'm not gonna lie, it's been really hard at times. But I guess there's also a lot of people who refuse to accept that I could be happy out here because of what I've left behind. But the reality is I've never been happier. I've got two beautiful kids and an amazing wife. Like, the happiness in my family now, I have never felt anywhere else before. Before this book. But I genuinely believe that if me and my family can reconcile, can put our differences behind us, but first there needs to be conversation and accountability. And if that doesn't happen, then that's very sad. But I will focus on my, my life my amazing family that I'm so grateful to have, my two kids who are bouncing up and down me this morning. I'm not angry anymore. 
there are things that will still anger me, but I'm not angry anymore because I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. How much clearer can he be? He's already said he is very happy with his life. He has an amazing wife and beautiful kids. Why on earth would he leave a life that he's always desired to come back to an abusive and toxic environment? You wouldn't do that. No one in their right mind would do that. Since Harry came over to briefly meet with his father following his recent cancer diagnosis, the British media want you to believe that Harry wanted to meet with William too, but was refused. They also say that William should not forgive him. <laughs> forgive him for what? Furthermore, what makes people think that Harry is actually looking for forgiveness from William? The same William who allegedly described their mother, Diana, as paranoid. The same William who allegedly became so enraged with Harry that he pushed him hard enough for Harry to sustain an injury on his back. The same William who allegedly didn't want Harry to tell Meghan about that very incident because he was afraid of how Meghan would react. I think it's fair to say, and maybe we should just accept, that William is not the forgiving type. As you can see from this article written a couple of years ago, it's giving controlling, it's giving manipulative, it's giving petulance, it's giving I will stamp my feet until I get my own way, it's giving narcissism and for me this is not the makings of an effective king. Harry appears to be doing very well without needing his brother's so-called forgiveness that he never even asked for in the first place. <laughs> William, as I said before, has bigger fish to fry, with the world wondering where his wife is, while he attends events on his own. Speaking of which, I find it very interesting that the statement he made about the current conflict in the Middle East came only from him with his cipher, not from William and Kate as the Prince and Princess of Wales. Surely Kate has the ability to express her concerns while incapacitated or is he trying to tell us that she's being phased out gradually? And with regard to William's statement, the press was heaping praise and behaving as though it was going to change the course of the entire conflict. Simultaneously, people wanted to know when Harry and Meghan were going to say anything. Harry and Meghan actually published a joint statement on their website under archwell.org in October last year. And while Harry and Meghan continue to be united in everything they do, I thought this insight about relationships offered by Paul Carrick Brunson on Stephen Bartlett's podcast, Diary of a CEO, was extremely interesting. If you have a partner who shows you contempt, as Dr. Gottman would say, there's a 99% likelihood you'll, you'll break up. And so John Gottman analyzed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of couples, and he would look at how they interact with each other. And he determined that based on how they interact with each other is indicative of if they will stay together in a relationship. And he identified these four types of interaction that suggest, you know what, things are a little shaky. Here's the biggest, and I see this a lot contempt. The reason why is because real contempt suggests that you are on a whole nother level than your partner. It's a level of disrespect. You're, you're saying to your partner, you're no longer on my level. When you see that level of disrespect coming from your partner, you know they don't, they don't respect you. They don't value you. Now, if we go back a few decades, 
The signs of contempt from Charles to Diana were evident before the couple formally separated and subsequently divorced. I bring this up because of the way the media constantly tries to brainwash us to believe that all is well in the Wales household, while trying to convince us that the Sussexes are on the brink of a divorce. Some social media commentators regularly make the point that although William physically resembles his mother, he has the characteristics of his father. So I will leave you to draw your own conclusions. Now, seven years have passed since Harry and Meghan's relationship was made public. They are criticised for constantly holding hands, the inference being that they're codependent. Megan? You're looking amazing, Megan. Bye. Based on Paul Carrick Brunson's insights, it is clear that Harry and Megan have such high regard and respect for one another, and their body language demonstrates that. Whilst they are strong independently, they know they are stronger together because together they can achieve much more. But I'm not angry anymore because I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. So earlier I referenced Paul Carrick Brunson who um, gave his insights into relationships. Like myself, Paul has a Jamaican background. We both come from Jamaican households and we would have grown up hearing this. If you can't hear, you will feel. Yeah, it's what, something my grandma used to say quite a bit. There were quite a few of us grandchildren running about the yard and that's what she used to use. In effect, what she's saying, if you don't listen to what you're being told, you certainly will have to accept what you get. So if you can't hear, you will feel. And every time I remember it, I smile. I smile because of my grandma. If you can't hear, you will feel. It could be argued that, although there may be other variables, because the establishment refuses to hear Harry when he says he's very happy, it's to their detriment. Harry knows how this game works. Diana tried to play the game but she, where she fell short was that she didn't have the support she needed. Harry is a bit wiser when it comes to this and Harry knows that his path is completely different. You know, that was the whole point of spare. He was the, the spare part but I think it's worked out in his favour. There are no guarantees in this life. William was earmarked, for want of a better word, to become king. And it's ironic because that line of the Windsors, the queen was never meant to be queen. If you um, know about recent history, her father was never meant to be king. It was his brother who abdicated, which set off this whole chain of events because Edward the, which Ed, I can't remember which Edward it was, <laughs> but Queen, Liz Queen Elizabeth's uncle, he decided he was going to live his life. The only difference is that he was king. Harry is not king. Harry is not 
um, first in line to the throne after Charles. Everybody knows this. William has been groomed for this. It's almost been set in stone, but we can see from the beginning of 2024, nothing is guaranteed. If the worst happens, can you imagine this? Let's be hypothetical for a moment. Let's say Harry had a moment of madness and decided he was going to move his family back to the UK um, because of the fact that his father is ill. That's not going to happen, but let's just say. Now, Harry knows what the seriousness of his father's diagnosis is. We don't know how serious it is, but let's say that for argument's sake, Charles doesn't have that long left. If Harry comes back and, you know, takes up his, resumes his duties as a working um, member of the royal family, when Charles goes, he's stuck here. For him, in my head anyway, that would be the worst possible outcome. After his father's passing, that would be the worst possible outcome. Harry does not want to be here. He doesn't want to be here. And if the establishment doesn't hear him, they will continue to feel the effects of what's going on. Diana tried to steer these boys in a certain direction by helping them to appreciate that they're in a very privileged position. And Harry seems to have taken that on board. Even before he met Meghan, when he was going out to Botswana, he cites Botswana as one of his favorite places. Um, and the charity Centre Bali, which he named in his mum's honour, forget me not, her favourite flower. William, not so much, um, because he's always been told you're special, you're the special one, you're the chosen one. Unfortunately, there are no guarantees in this life, as I've said before. So imagine if that house of cards comes tumbling down, what is William going to do? It's starting to crumble now. It's not as if William can go and get a job in McDonald's. He's not, he, his skill set is non-existent for anything else. He only knows what he's been groomed for since birth. Harry has many strings to his bow. As many people want to put him down. Harry is very adaptable. He kind of can go with the flow. William can't do that. As much as William wants to try and, you know, be in competition with um, Harry. Harry has said that before. They've grown up as competitors with William saying that he's going to put some of his own money to build. I can't remember how many houses, a low number of houses, a housing project in Cornwall. I mean, OK. <laughs> um, but yeah. Media, Harry's not coming back. He said it with his own mouth. Me saying it is not going to make any difference to you. But understand, Harry is not coming back. So perhaps it is now time for the British media to wake up finally from their delusional state. If your thoughts were provoked in any way, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet become a house guest, don't forget to hit subscribe and activate all of your notifications. I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and you shall catch me in the next video. Mm -hmm.